Hello, Waiwa. Welcome to the Question Hour show from the Parliament House Complex, where we bring you important unstart questions that were asked by the members of the Upper House and the response given by the government in the written format. I'm Kriti Mishra and joining me is my colleague Akhilesh Suman. So, Akhilesh, let's begin the yeah. Question Hour show. And the first question that we are bringing for our viewers is from member Tiruchi Siva and this one pertains to the Ministry of Rural Development. And Mr. Siva has asked about the number of roads that are constructed under Pradhan Mantri Gram Sarak Yoshna during the last year. The Ministry has said that the sum of 804.19 crore has been released as financial incentive under PMGSY to the best performing states during the year 2018-19. And uh, the ministry has also given the name of a state source. One is Andhra Pradesh, that is uh, 32.98. And I think it is in alphabetical order. So if I am reading the name, it doesn't mean that it is the best performing states. So first is Andhra Pradesh, 32.98 crore. Assam, 36.18 crore. Bihar, 79.43 crore. Haryana, 13.2 crore. Himachal Pradesh, 26.12 crore. JNK 9.31 crore, Karnataka 46.63 crore, Kerala 5.11 crore, Madhya Pradesh 144.19 crore, Odisha 73.68 crore, Rajasthan 150.05 crore, Tamil Nadu 30.14 crore, Uttar Pradesh 116.63 crore, West Bengal 40.54 crore. The government also says that the parameters for determining the best performing states for grant of financial incentives under PMGSY in 2018-19 were as under achievement of target length during the year, achievement of target habitations of the year, length constructed under new technology during the year, quality of roads, data entry on online management, monitoring and accounting system, maintenance policy, expenditure on a maintenance of roads within defect liability period, length renewed during post DLP percentage renew, and ninth, inspection of maintenance work, national quality monitor inspections. So it is not that the conditions are not given, they, they are also giving that what was the basis on which the best performing estates were selected for giving the incentive. Now let's move on to the next question, which pertains to the Ministry of Shipping and has been asked by member Vijayasai Reddy. And Mr. Reddy has asked whether it is a fact that Vishakha Patnam Port Trust has decided to construct an international cruise terminal at Vishakha Patnam to promote tourism in the country. And the answer is very precise, Kriti. The answer is, as part of a study to assess the potential of cruise tourism in India, it emerged that Visakha Patnam will have significant opportunity to serve as home port for open jaw selling initially. The international footfall in Visakha Patnam has increased from 0.54 lakh in 2014 to 1.04 lakh in 2017 at a CAGR of approximately 25%. So it's a significant uh, achievement. An average employment on a cruise ship is one job for every three to four passengers. This could translate into major employment on board a ship that may call Visakha Patnam port as home port, implying generation of thousand direct jobs on a cruise vessel with a capacity of 3,000 passengers. So you can count the number of passengers and you can count the employment opportunity that is being created due to uh, Visakha Patnam Port Trust cruise, uh, you know, tourism. It's a good initiative anyway. And the next question is by, by Dr. Banda Prakash and he is asking the Ministry of Shipping whether the potential of waterways in our country is immense. So if you want to increase the crude uh, tourism, you also need to know that whether waterways uh, are increasing or not. So it's an interesting question and what is the answer, Kirti? Well, the reply given by the government is again an affirmative and the government goes on to say that there is adequate potential in the country for development of technically viable inland waterways as a supplementary mode of transportation to roadways and also railways. To tap this potential and to promote shipping and navigation on inland waterways, 106 new national waterways have been declared in addition to the existing five national waterways under the National Waterways Act of 2016. 
The government further goes on to say that National Waterway 1 is operational for shipping and navigation. The Inland Waterways Authority of India is implementing the Jal Marg Vikas Project or JMVP for capacity augmentation of navigation on the Haldia Varnasi stretch of National Waterway 1 with the technical and part of financial assistance of the World Bank. The salient features of the project are development of various infrastructure interventions, for example, construction of multimodal and intermodal terminals, row road terminals, a navigational lock, bunkering facilities, integrated vessel repair and maintenance facilities, and development of fairway including automated information techniques of differential global positioning system or the GPS and river information system called the RIS, day and night navigation aids, river training and also river conservation works. The government further goes on to say that national waterways development projects are approved and also monitored by competent authorities of IWAI and Ministry of Shipping. Let's move on to the next question pertaining to the Ministry of Science and Technology and this one has been asked by member Lal Singh Vadodia. And Mr. Vadodia says and asks whether it is a fact that the government is seriously considering to promote science and technology in the country. And the answer by the government is in affirmative again. The government says that the government has taken several steps to promote science and technology. The number of uh, new schemes have been launched to encourage and attract the scientific community, especially young scientists. These include early career research awards, national postdoctoral fellowship scheme, overseas visiting doctoral fellowship, visiting advanced joint research faculty scheme, uh, and among the few. The science and technology activities have been realigned by bringing a judicious mix of basic and applied science. The government is promoting innovations and a startup activities in a big way. In order to enhance uh, and improve crop productivity, district level agro advisory services for farmers have been implemented too. A number of water technology initiatives have been initiated to promote R&D activities for providing safe drinking water at affordable cost. Several initiatives aimed at producing clean and green energy have been initiated. Some major successes have been achieved in the area of health, hygiene and sanitation to fulfill the dream of Swasth Bharat. Science and technology cooperation with a number of countries have been initiated to promote science and technology in the country. A high power overarching council called Prime Minister Science, Technology and Innovation Advisory Committee has been set up to advise the government on policy matters related to science, technology and innovation. Government's effort to promote science and technology sector has helped India attaining sixth position in the world in terms of total of publications in science citation index journals and 11th position in terms of patent file. India's annual growth rate of research publication in science citation index journal is about 14% as against global average of 4%. So quite an exhaustive answer and government is very seriously working on creating a scientific temper in the country, Kriti, that means. And the next question comes to you that has been asked by Bhuneswar Kalita pertaining to Ministry of Mines. He is asking whether it is a fact that several mineral reserves have been discovered recently in various parts of Assam and if so, the details thereof. So what is the answer? Well, the reply to this question is very specific and the government goes on to say that Geological Survey of India has taken up three mineral exploration programs during the current field season program 2018-19 in the state of Assam. Further. Mineral Exploration Corporation Limited, a public sector undertaking under Ministry of Mines, has also carried out exploration for various mineral deposits in Assam. Let's move on to the last question in this edition of Question R, and this one pertains to the Ministry of Animal Husbandry and Dairying and Fisheries. And this one has been asked by member Kanta Kardam, and she has asked to the government about the steps taken to promote pisciculture in the country. Uh, Kriti, as you know that government is giving much more importance to blue economy and marine economy. Uh, the government says that the Department of Fisheries, Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying under the centrally sponsored scheme on blue economy, integrated development and management of fisheries provides financial assistance to the state governments, union territories for development of fisheries and aquaculture, including PC culture in the country. The broad activities assisted under CSS for promotion of pisciculture are integrated development of reservoirs, 
installation of cage pens in reservoirs, development of fresh water aquaculture, development of waterlogged area, development of cold water fisheries, productive utilization of inland saline alkaline waters for aquaculture, rejuvenation of herbal, sebi armor, rural lakes, tanks, a stocking of uh, fish uh, fingerlings in beals, wetlands and promotion of recirculatory aquaculture system that is called RAS. Under the CSS, the central fund of 1,464.43 crore has been released during the past four financial years 2015-16 to 2018-19 to state governments, union territories for development of fisheries and aquaculture including PC culture. So uh, I think uh, it uh, is very exhaustive uh, answer to the question that is related to one particular that is fishery, physical, PC culture. Well absolutely Akhilesh and the focus of this government is also on agriculture and allied activities. That was all we had for you in this edition of Question Hour. But on the other side, we'll have Prashankal with our colleagues Arvind Singh and Preeti Singh. Stay tuned.